Hello, everyone. I hope you guys are all doing well and surviving Mercury retrograde, Saturn retrograde, and now Jupiter. So we have, we're here to make a short video with our favorite, uh, Shanati. Welcome, Shanati. Namaste, Nav. So great to be here with you and our astrological community to discuss a third retrograde Vakri condition planet joining the other two of, uh, well, Mercury retrograde will end soon, but we got a long transit of Saturn and Jupiter retrograde ahead of us. So very excited to discuss this transit today. Thank you. Thank you, Shanadi. It's always a pleasure to have you on our channel and to learn a lot from you. <laughs> I love discussing the retrogression of planets um, because it's, it's, it's misunderstood. A lot of times we think retrograde can be an inherently negative thing, um, but it can actually be quite positive in terms of the dramatic effects because the retrogression, the Vakri state increases the bulla of the planet and you have a favorable planet like Jupiter. So we're gonna have a lot of Jupiterian energy coming into the chart. So very, very exciting. And one of those things is the Nietzsche Banga Yoga that's coming up too, which is very exciting as well. So um, let's start by doing a chant to our beloved Guru Deva, Brihas Pataye Jupiter, and then we'll get started on our analysis. All right. Devinam cha risnam cha gurum kanchana shani bam budi butam trilokshaam tam namami bruhaspati mum devinam cha risnam cha gurum kanchana shani bam budi butam trilokshaam Tam namami bruhaspati mom devinam cha risnam cha gurum kanchena shani bam budi butam trilokshaam tam namami bruhaspati om gram grim gram saha guru deva namaha Om Gram Grim Gram Saha Guru Deva Namaha. Om Gram Grim Gram Saha Guru Deva Namaha. Om Gram Grim Gram Saha Guru Deva Namaha. Hari Om Om Namah Shivaya Namaste. So Jupiter is stationary right now, right? Yeah, Jupiter is stationary right now. So if you're feeling a little bit weird, things are kind of stuck. Stationary is usually the most difficult position for any planet before it really begins its retrogression. A lot of times people think, uh-oh, Jupiter's about to go retrograde. Um, and once it really starts rolling in the retrograde position, it's going to create a lot of benefits. Um, so right now is really the, the most difficult period between now and about Tuesday. Uh, and next Thursday on Jupiter Day, it's going to be in a full retrogression. I think we'll really start to see the positive benefits of it then. But in the meanwhile, uh, just hold tight and understand that things are going to get better real soon. Mm. So um, first thing is the first day of the retrogression. Today is Friday, June 18th. And so perfect timing for our analysis today. On Monday, we have Jupiter entering a retrogression. Uh, Jupiter is going in retrogression in the Kumba in the Aquarius Rashi at about eight degrees is when it's going to start its retrogression. So there's still going to be some time before it transits over to Capricorn, its debilitation position. Um, but there is a starting of this retrogression back into Capricorn on Monday, this coming Monday, June 21st. And then in the second graph here, we're going to see what happens when it starts to go back into Capricorn. So from June 21st to September 14th, it'll be going retrograde in Aquarius. And then on September 14th, it'll enter the 29th degree of Capricorn. This is really important to mention for two reasons. One is that Saturn is currently in a Vakri state in a retrograde condition, also in Capricorn. 
Capricorn being ruled by Shani, and so Shani being in its own sign. And then secondarily, we have to note that Jupiter, when it enters Capricorn Rashi, goes into a debilitation state. But this debilitation state is negated by the Nietzsche Bunga Yoga, which is when a retrograde or Vakri state conditioned planet is in a debilitation. And therefore, it's really not debilitated to the same extent. There's a little bit of confusion around it. Some people say that it will act exalted. I think that's a little bit of an extreme measure to say that. What you have is a reduction of the inauspicious effect, a reduction of the debilitation effect, and some positive auspicious energy. So I don't know if it will act totally exalted, like the way it will when Jupiter is in Cancer, right? That's a totally different vibration. But you are going to get some of the negative, inauspicious dark side of the debilitation effects kind of limited by the Nietzsche Bunga Yoga. So it, it actually is a pretty positive transit, especially in its debilitation because of the Nietzsche Bung. Now, what we're looking again at um, when this transit is going to go back into a direct position, and that is October 18th of this year. And then shortly after, it'll go back into the Aquarius sign for its permanent transit into from Aquarius, and then eventually making its way to its natural sign of Pisces, which we're all very excited about. But we understand that between now, that means throughout June, throughout July, throughout August, throughout September, we're seeing this retrogression until mid-October where Jupiter goes back into a direct position into Capricorn and then enters back into Aquarius. Now, because it's going through two signs, it was going to be a little bit lengthy to go over an ascendant for both when it's in Capricorn and both when it's in Aquarius. So what I have here is the birth chart based on its transit being in the Rushi and some of the general effects that we can expect. So first, let's take a look at Jupiter's retrogression as it goes through the Aquarius sign. So the, the retrogression of Jupiter in Aquarius. Jupiter in Aquarius is, again, a lot of times we think of the relationship between Jupiter and Saturn as being on the malefic side, but Jupiter actually does pretty well in the Aquarius sign because when we're looking at Aquarius, it's about the advancement of our consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's about our evolution spiritually so that the way that we perceive the universe is really in benefit to how we want to grow in our lives. And Jupiter also, as the Guru Deva, also helps us grow in our lives in this way. But one of the things that I think has been interesting as it relates to kind of the scenario which our life has fallen under is when we were in lockdown and suffering with the intensity of the COVID paradigm, we were really having to evaluate ourselves, right? Because we were stuck at home, especially when Jupiter was in Capricorn, we were stuck at home under lockdown. And in the beginning, we might have had more challenges as far as our weakness is concerned. But as we had to kind of work on those things, as Jupiter kind of transited out of Capricorn into Aquarius, our consciousness evolved and our life evolved. And I'd like to say that for most of us, we become a better version of ourselves. Now that most of the restrictions have been lifted, now there's this opportunity to kind of fall back into old patterns. And there really hasn't been any consequences of those patterns of living a life in alignment out of our consciousness. Now with the retrogression of Jupiter going back into Aquarius and going back into Capricorn, it's really this opportunity to say, okay, well, we learned certain lessons as far as our relationship with our higher self, the guru self within, how to relate to society, how to relate to our teachers, how to relate to our spiritual religious program, right? Because it was a time where we really wanted to develop our relationship with faith to understand that things were gonna get better there eventually. Now that things are starting to get better, do we forget about our faith? No, it's the time to integrate that faith even more. And now with the retrogression of Jupiter and Aquarius, one of the things that I, I, I think is really gonna play out is how has the spiritual sadhana that you've developed now that things are back open and you can go outside and you can go to the bar if you can want to, or you can go to the casino, all of these things that we really didn't have an opportunity to do for some time, now we have an opportunity to do them again. But that doesn't mean we should, because now hopefully we're healthier, 
we're happier, we're more spiritual, we're more selfless, and we want to actually do good. So let's not fall back into those old habits or patterns. But the 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 negative effects of kind of falling back into those old patterns, they're not as strong as the Jupiter is retrograde in Aquarius, as we're going to see when Jupiter is in Capricorn. That's when you're really going to start to see some adverse negative health effects. You're going to start to see challenges with your job. Maybe you got a new job recently, right? Because we're also seeing for the, for the Aquarius Jupiter retrograde transit, we're seeing an exalted K2 effect on the 10th house of career. So maybe there's been some changes in your career. Maybe that aspect on the seventh house has developed a new relationship, but that's where you become, become a better person. Our individual energy is harmonizing at a higher state, is harmonizing at a higher frequency. So if we fall back into old patterns, as it goes back into Capricorn here and joins with Saturn, we're going to risk losing that job. We're going to risk losing that relationship. We're going to mm-hmm. risk, uh, you know, some, some negative effects if we don't continue to integrate the lessons that we've learned and how we better ourselves. Just because the temptation to go back to old ways is there, now is the best time to really align to that higher vibration within yourself. And I think that's part of what we're seeing with this transit is the temptation of the way things were before this virus. Now they're coming back in and we can kind of fall back into those old patterns and habits and kind of forget the priorities that we kind of reestablished in our lives over the course of that period. So we're seeing society change. You know, we're seeing things open up. We're seeing, you know, sporting events. Like I just went to the Phillies game the other day versus the Yankees, New York Yankees. It was sold out. There were 30,000 people there. None of them were wearing masks. So this was a, this was a, a wild experience, but it really was symbolic of this kind of transition we're making. Um, and just like with this transit, there were people there that were drunk. And the Phillies fans were fighting with the Yankees fans and they were getting kicked out. So these are the kind of habits and patterns that I don't want us to fall back in during this transit. We'll talk a little bit more about the Aquarius position, but let's bring Capricorn into it as well. Because when it goes into the Capricorn period, we mentioned that it goes into the Capricorn here on September 14th. So it's going to be into through half of September through Uh, half of October and really towards the end of October when it goes back into Aquarius, we're going to see this exact conjunction, not exact in degrees, but a pretty tight conjunction of two Vukri state or retrograde planets. And it was actually when these planets were retrograde together in the sign of Capricorn that things got really, really bad within society. That's when we were all kind of locked down. There was lots of, you know, outbreaks going on, people dying in every country. That doesn't mean by any means, I'm not a fearful person. I don't think that things are going to get back to the way that they were being before. But if we're not careful and we're not live our lives in a healthy way, Maybe they won't manifest in that same negative way with the virus, but they can manifest in other negative ways, right? So we just want to consider that um, activation here and see one of the things that's been happening, if you take a look at the Capricorn transit on this side of it, you'll, you'll see that that exalted K2, which was in the 10th house in the Aquarius transit, which relates to making a job is now falling into the 11th house of profits and gains. And that K2's exaltation has the potential to create some long-term profits and gains, right? But now people are spending more money again, right? People are buying houses, people are buying cars, people are buying fancy Rolex watches and trips to Jamaica and going to France and London, right? They're like, well, we've been stuck inside for so long. How can we spend our money? This is actually a thing where it's like, okay, well, just because you have money doesn't mean you should spend it. Just because you can drink alcohol doesn't mean that you should get drunk. Just because you have an opportunity to now because you've saved some money and you've developed some healthier habits doesn't mean that it's the time to break those. So we see the potential for saving your money here in the Capricorn transit for long-term gains, 
or we see the potential for uh, spending our money and then being in just a difficult position as we was before. So we really want to avoid some of those energies as well. Now, one of the other things that I'm seeing is with the Rahu in the fourth house in the Aquarius transit, maybe that a lot of people are buying new homes right? Because they want to find a new location and people who have been in living in old homes or their homes haven't been able to sell, now they're able to sell their houses above the street value that they were before. So it's a good time to be selling houses again with the Jupiter retrogression in Aquarius. Now is really the big period and good time to sell it because it's possible when it goes into Capricorn, which is at the, you know, we talked about that in the September, this summer is probably the best time to, to, to sell your house. Um, it's gonna, the, the prices are gonna go back down when Saturn goes into Capricorn. So I just want you to consider that. Um, and if you're buying a house, maybe you actually wanna wait to September because the prices are gonna go down based on the transit, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Some other interesting things is the development of new romances we've seen with the Jupiter and Aquarius um, transit. Um, the development of like, you know, some, some it, taking the relationships to the next level. Now, obviously the solar and lunar eclipses haven't been helping relationships. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that, but this transit, um, it, it, it shows the potential, but when it goes back into Aquarius, that exaltation of Rahu falls into the fifth house. So we do really want to be concerned about being loyal and faithful to our romantic partners, because an exaltation of Rahu in the fifth house, even for, because you're seeing that Jupiter aspect in the seventh house, for a married person, this could be a temptation for a relationship outside of marriage. So just to understand that that temptation is an illusion, it's going to ruin your relationship with your children. It's going to just, it's going to destroy your relationship with your husband or your wife. So it's really a time that just all of these things that we're talking about, right? We've been doing better on them because this direct transit is in Jupiter, right? We've been loyal. You didn't really have a chance to because you've been stuck in the house with your spouse for such a long period of time. So we'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that. But now we're saying, okay, well, just because you can doesn't mean you should. One of the things that we're seeing with the, with the retrogression of Jupiter as it's going through these two signs is a lot of temptation in different areas of life temptation romantically outside of the monogamous relationship, temptation to spend money, right? Outside of the money that we've been saving, a temptation to get outside of our spiritual evolution, to get outside of a sober lifestyle that we've been trying to develop and fall back into these partying days, especially in the time of summer, right? That happens to people, right? They wanna have a couple beers with the barbecue, right? Let's just stick with the barbecue. So we do want to really uh, create the positive energy of aligning to that Guru Deva energy inside of you. And one of the things that happens with Jupiter is we all have this animalistic version of ourselves, which has our weaknesses and our faults, and we don't want to work on them. Some humans are stuck in that energy during the Kali Yuga. Then we have the human self, which wants to work on certain flaws and weaknesses as long as it's convenient for us, right? We wanna work on that so we can get something that we want. And then we have our guru self, which is willing to look in the mirror, analyze our flaws and weaknesses and truly strive to be the best person that we can be. But how do we know that we're the best person we can be unless we're tempted not to be? And I think that's one of the retrogression effects that we're seeing through this transit is the temptation to, to, to fall back into patterns that are not in alignment with really what our soul is striving for, for our spiritual evolution, right? And so for the Aquarius transit, that is a material uh, fault. Uh, it's a friendship fault, right? People, places, and things, right? Don't fall back into relating with people who aren't on your spiritual level you know they maybe they question the spiritual beliefs that you've come to have faith in and now by spending time with that community not your spiritual tribe but maybe your convenient friends of your childhood or your past you're going to fall back into old patterns just because the weather's nicer and things are more free doesn't mean that that should happen 
And then we see a Pisces activation on the Upachaya third house, self-improvement, evolutionary energy when Jupiter goes back into the Capricorn. And so it's really about, this is a house of travel. So again, be careful with the traveling experience. You know, Don't let that get too far ahead of you. Don't spend too much of your finances that relates to traveling and really work on yourself. Upachaya means to look at the mirror and work on yourself. And then we're also seeing for the uh, Capricorn transit, a Sagittarius activation on the 12th Bhava, which is really to do with loss and attachment. The higher vibration of that attachment, Saturn wants to teach us discipline. And the more that we're attached to something with this transit of the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, with Saturn activating the ascendant and the second, and uh, Jupiter activating the third and the 12th, one of the things that we're seeing is the harder that you try to hold on so to something like money, like a position, like a reputation, that all relates to the ego and that the more Saturn and Jupiter as both being guru planets are going to try to take that away from you. So you really want to practice some non-attachment, a reduction of the ahankar. And so my primary remedy as we work through this period and in general with the retrogression of Jupiter is the bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is the devotional yoga of the heart. It's chanting, it's kirtan, it's singing the name of Krishna, it's singing the name of Shiva, it's singing the name of Durga and celebrating that everything that you have in your life is not because of luck, is not because of happenstance, is not because of a coincidence, is because you are blessed by the divine gods that exist in this cosmic consciousness that we're living in. And so that kind of like reverence for the higher powers that exist is why we deserve to have those things. And if we don't have that gratitude, we don't deserve to keep them and the devas will take them away from us. So I just wanted to create this paradigm of our relationship with our higher self and the temptations that are gonna come up in this period. But that means it's time to arrest your discipline, honor Saturn and Jupiter and take your spiritual practice to the next level. And just to understand the last thing, when it comes to these frequencies and energies with people, places, and things out there, other people are going to bring you down before you can bring them up. And so just remember that, that you might have a good intention of wanting to help people. Maybe you found a path of sobriety and you want to help out your friend who drinks too much. They're going to make you drink before you make them stop drinking. So just consider these energies in your life that... God helps those who help themselves. And a lot of people that are suffering with issues out there, they don't want to help themselves. So let them come to you before you offer them the help, right? Jupiter is the guru deva, right? Jupiter is the guru. When the disciple humbly asks, oh, great guru, Amritanandimaima, please help me with all of your great wisdom. Then they're going to help you in the spiritual sense with your wisdom. But you don't have gurus coming up to people going, listen, you need to do this and you need to do that. <laughs> Right. So it's it's really an energy of helping yourself and setting yourself up and leading by example with positive decisions and positive choices in your life as we're looking at this transit until October. So I just wanted to discuss a brief overview of the transit. I hope that's exciting for our spiritual community. And uh, and I love you all. Thank you for for letting me take this time to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Shanaji. That was very well put together. And thank you. I hope you guys all enjoyed the short video and the overview of a Jupiter retrograde. So enjoy and take care of everyone. Bye-bye. Namaste.